Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us at our sanctuary for... This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Whether I'm in the valley, on the mountain, in the wilderness, in the orchard, in the water, in the desert, it just doesn't matter. The fact is that I'm alive. When you got up this morning, even if you're not yet off your bed, you sense that you are still in the land of the living. That's a reason to praise God. Amen. I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan, and I am inviting you right now, welcoming you to It's Your Date with Destiny, and we have my wife and all the Covenanters of Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, and declaring to you, you could sing in the fire, you could dance in the water, because the God that you serve, he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And like David in the darkest valley where the shadow of death itself is stalking you, you declare, I will not be afraid of you. I fear no evil. Amen. We have really been releasing as this strong prophetic word uh, ab about the whole question of a worshiper, being a worshiper, being a worshiper wherever a worshiper is in spite of what's happening. And we've been using the master worshiper himself, David. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've been using him and his experience in Psalm 63 as he was in a wilderness, he refused to worry. He decided, I'm going to sing. He composed the song. And we've been looking at it uh, for quite a while now. And there's a final installment for uh, this season concerning a worshiper is a worshiper is a worshiper. So we want you to really enjoy it, receive it, send for the DVDs, send for the CDs, call up somebody, tell that person, you need to get the entire set so that you can really be refreshed as the word came forth out of us. So while we are on the air, you can call our number 633-3780 and the other numbers that are scrolling across the screen right now. So, brace yourself. Here comes another excerpt of a worshiper is a worshiper is a worshiper. I don't know if you really understand what, what God sees of you when you decide you will leave home. Yeah. And come to the house of God. You dress up to come to the house of God. You spray on some niceties to come to the house of God. Once you show up, as far as God is concerned, you have made a sacrifice in it. Especially with the ladies, um, TLC, HGTV, um, especially with with us guys, the wrestling. <laughs> West Indies Creek. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. I, I surrender. <laughs> so, just, just go back to verse 8 for me and we're going we to finish here. I thought I'd have finished all of this tonight. Uh, perish the thought though. But, but, but before that, before that, I want to give you three definitions. Notice recently when I was looking over this psalm, that three times David uses the word soul in this song, this psalm. Verse 8 says, my soul follows hard after thee. Verse 5 says what? My soul shall be satisfied with marrow 
and fatness. And then in verse 1, he says, My soul thirsted for thee. Ah. To develop that going to take some time. But again, realize this. He already settled the matter concerning his body and how he, 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 he dedicates himself to God. Because your soul cannot function without your body. Huh? The day your body stops functioning, you're dead. And what happens to your soul? It goes back to God. So David is actually saying to us by way of, by way of uh, 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 deduction. He said, I don't have to mention the fact that I have already dedicated my body. It is understood that I am now using my body as the vehicle to take my soul to where God wants me. I, I, are you hearing me? Yeah. Which is the same thing like Romans 12.1. But if you understand what soul really means, the inner man, then you're talking about your habits. You're talking about your character. You're talking about the way you treat people. In other words, you cannot be going after God with a passion and not living like God does. In fact, the more you go after God is the more you resemble God. And resemble here doesn't mean a look-alike in terms of a picture, but a look-alike in terms of how he will deal with a situation. Amen. Yep. And that's why I, I, I told you some time ago, uh, John 1, 12, where it says he came unto his own and his own received him not. Why did the Jews not want to receive Jesus? Because they did not have what it takes. In fact, they had it. But they did not want to. Live like Jesus lived. They did not want to be kind to people. They, I, I, and and, and on, on Sunday, we, I hope we get, we get there, where, where, where Jesus says to his disciples, it's not this man know his parents that have sinned, but that the work of God will be manifested in him. Uh, for the work of God to be manifest, you need the energy of his glory. Huh? You need, the, you need the energy of his power and you need the authority of his will. It is God's will that that man got his healing. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Uh, so you're telling his disciples, what is this? You've been with me all this time and I've taught you how to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The power and the glory and the kingdom belong to God and you are still looking at it the devil's way. The religious way. You see, I want to, want to, 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 to know, it's about taking on the character of God. Tell your neighbor that for me. The character of God. To take on the character of God is to pursue God. Stop only seeing it as a, as a, as a, as a running race. Stop only seeing it as you trying to catch up with God. Start seeing it as though all that God is, you are actually working on becoming that. Uh, I don't know if you heard me. The right angle from which to see what we are talking about here, uh, uh, going after God with a passion, is this. I am striving to get to the point where all that God is, is what I am becoming. That is worship. That is worship. Tell your neighbor, that is worship. Because anytime you meet somebody who you want to copy, you actually are adoring that person. And to a measure, you are worshipping that person. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so the scripture really is saying to us, I want you to get to the point where you're so passionate for God that you want to become like God. And the process by which that will take place is you actually uh, sacrificing to him because of his value. I would have done this, but that's not what God would do. 
Therefore, I will do what God would do. Right away, I have put another brick into, no, stone, stone, he builds us with stone. Another stone into the building that he's making us. Because we are living stones, lively stones in this temple that he's building. I, I, are you hearing me? I'm going to pull it in here, but I want to give you two meanings that you must, you must get. Uh, find it in your dictionary if you, if you have one, the electronic dictionaries. And one of them is value. Tell, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor, you are only passionate, are only passionate. Over, what you value. over what you value, after what you value. After. You only go after a thing that you value. <laughs> Once you value something, it changes the whole dynamics of your thinking. Yeah. So, 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 this Elvira, uh, she, she tells me, uh, uh, um, come down my office, I'm going I I I to see you on Monday, um, I have a check for you. Because I'm puzzled, uh, I mean, the grace of God that's upon you gave me this promotion. Uh, uh, and she tells me it's going to be a check for $1,000. But then Russell tells, tells me, meet me up by Nestle's boy. I have a 10000 for you. Now, where I go in Monday? <laughs> Nestle's is it? I will nestle in Nestle's. After I get it, I'll come back by she. I'll see <laughs> if she's still there. But if, if somebody tells you, three different people tell, tell you to wait on three different corners, one say a thousand, one tell you ten thousand, the next one tell you fifteen thousand. The one who promised promise me a thousand tell me it's three o'clock I'm meeting them. Hello. Five to three. Five to three. I text in over so you know. Because I won't tell me quarter past three. So I wait five past three. And then come yet. Hello. I go on. Because 10,000 song in plenty. But there's a 15,000 up the road. And he's a, he's a meet him quarter past three. No, I value 10,000. And I value I'm 15,000. But half past three he ain't reach yet. And over so I supposed to reach the person for half past three. You know, depending on my value system, that will determine whether or not I stand there waiting for the 10,000 or I forget he. Because our value, hey, hey, when I was reading the, 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 the meaning of value, I want you to put this in your spirit. Because the fact that you are willing to uh, dedicate yourself to God to serve in the kingdom of God is proof that you have a passion for him. Amen. But passion is determined by value. And hear what they say here. The third element here in, in, in their meanings. Value is the worth of something in terms of the amount of other things for which it can be exchanged. Or in terms of the medium of exchange. Ask your neighbor, is there anything that you could exchange the mercies of God for? Therefore, when David says, I'm going after God with a passion. He says, I have assessed my value system. And I've realized that there is more in catching up with God. There is more for me in choosing God. There is more for me in going after God than going after anything else. So it doesn't matter who, what, when, why presents him or herself or itself. My value system does not cater for anything that's less than God. My soul, my whole being follows hard after God. Here, yeah, the, the message Bible of verse 8, 
You can get that for me? Verse 8 of the Message Bible. My soul clings to you. And the vision I have of that is a child holding on to mommy, but mommy running for the bus. And the child almost flying in the air. <laughs> because mommy don't want to miss the bus, child don't want to be left behind. So the child is clinging to mommy, and mommy clinging to child on the way to a particular goal. I see God holding on to us like that. He said, I'm not going to let you go for you to miss what I have planned for you. You're pulling and tugging, but I'm running with you. And the way I grip you here, anybody ever had your mommy grip you there? And no matter you try to fight, because she's stronger than you. Come on, shut up. Come on. And sometimes God tells us, shut up. Just follow. Shut up. Just run after me. You don't know where we're going. I've already planned where we're going. Don't let go of me. Don't let nobody tell you, oh, this God thing, this God thing, when you have you, like, like some zombie. No. Run after me. Tell your neighbor, run after God. Run after him, my God. And bring the message now when we finish. Let's read. No, no, remember, remember, hey, hey, the two of them uh, uh, counterfoil one another. In fact, they complement one another. Uh, 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 the message by, no, the um, NIV says, you, I cling to you for dear life. And this one says, I hold on to you for dear life. And you hold me steady. Oh gosh, you know, you know, in, 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 it's one of those some activity when when the, the thing starts, they say steady as she goes. Tell your neighbor, steady as you go, steady as you go. In fact, uh, um, Psalm, did I say? I don't know next scripture. I know next one. Uh, Psalm thirty-seven, verse twenty-three. It says what? It says the steps of a good man are what ordered by the Lord and even if he falls he will not be cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand and I think the last time we finished with this that God is going to uphold me with his hands why? because he wants to prove a thing that I was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. In other words, when I hold on to God for dear life, it's not just for me. This is generations involved here. This is son, daughter, grandson, granddaughter, great grandson, great granddaughter, great, 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 great. Hey, if I hold on to God in this season, it changes the dynamics of the family. I'm telling you. My God. My, uh, we, that's why you, for us, we are always grateful to our mother and our father. They change the dynamics of the family by switching from false religion to serving God. Apostle Gemma's mother, same story. She switched to serving God from what they grew up in. And immediately the dynamics of life changed for generations to come. Somebody need to give God a praise, you know. I just want to say thank God because about three weeks now, yeah, three weeks ago, I got in an accident with my hmm. car. A lady, I was heading west on Robert Street. Who know Robert Street and Woodbrook? I was heading west. West. And she was heading north to south. She was going south. Right. On Lewis Street. And someone stopped for her to cross Robert Street. And she just fly across Robert Street, not thinking it have two ways of traffic.
hmm. and hit the side of my car, my, my, my fender, my front fender, my front door, my back door. Jesus. Yeah, the door sank in. I was all over the place, but God is a keeper. Amen. Come on, give right. God a praise there. So I just want to thank God tonight for life, for strength. I still have my limbs intact. That's right. And yeah, thank you very much. Good night. Thanks. My name is Donna Lisa. And I, like crazy, this week, I mean, I'm there in worship and the Lord just, it's like if the entire week, the events that took place, just flash, it just came to mind. And it started from Monday morning. I'm leaving home. And I normally, I'd only have two steps. I'm accustomed to coming down the step. And I twist, I'm talking about my foot, my ankle actually twisted like if I was yeah, actually on the ankle. Oh, sorry. Like I was actually on my ankle. Hmm. I said, okay, when I, I knew that some, that wasn't normal. So before I drove, drove off, I prayed again and, I, you know, I covered myself. But like this entire week is like if I was invisible on the road, like people not seeing, seeing me. So a, fly, a plane black, even cars coming towards me. And I mean, how come you not see and see me? I mean, I would blow my horn. This man crossing between two cars and he just appeared. I know my brakes not that good. I know it's God because he was, he was so close. He squeezed between two cars. There was no way I could have, I could have seen him trying to cross. So I want to give God praise. And this morning, well, it was the, I'm just by the gate by my office. And as I'm entering, this vehicle comes off the beat and comes onto the road, roadway. My light's on. His light is on also. And that man is coming towards me. I'm, what blew my mind is the fact that I was very calm. I was calm. And I'm looking at this light coming towards me. And he only recognized me when he was up close, very close. And I'm saying, you know, God, I thank you for keeping me. And we ought not to take these things for granted. When we see little accidents, little things happen, happening, the Lord just showed me there every day. Little things happening, and I just thank God that he kept me. Yes. You know, I give God praise. Destiny anointing oil. Every time we have been on the set, this is quite a while now, years we've been on the set, we've been anointing our hands with destiny anointing oil. And today I am sensing that there is a mother that's viewing right now. And your son is in prison. And he's there unwarrantedly. He's not supposed to be there. Somebody set him up. And you've been saying, God, what do I do? You've been crying and you've been weeping. I want you to come as close to the television as possible and put your hand on my hands because what I'm doing here is allowing you to touch a point of contact and this anointing is coming into your hands and if it's possible that you can get to one of our branches get a bottle of the anointing oil a, a, a vial of the anointing oil I just use here and I'm releasing authority in you that the next time you go to talk to the lawyer, get him to ask for an early date. Favor will be with you. And the next time you get to go see a son, you may not be able to touch him because of the arrangement, the physical arrangement. But you just stretch your hands towards him and tell him stretch his hands towards you. And I declare there shall be an anointing to destroy that yoke. Your weeping days are over. The real perpetrators are going to be found. Hallelujah. And the witnesses will come forth. This is a prophetic word to you from God. When he comes out, take him to church. Because right now he is crying out to God for his deliverance, and I declare it shall be so. And everyone else, you may not be in jail in, 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 the, in the legal sense, but you're in jail in terms of the spiritual and emotional sense. Stretch your hands forth and receive freedom right now. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Amen and amen. Well, this is the end of November. Yes, it's the end of November. Uh, one more month to go, one more month and about two days. <laughs> Uh, but you still have time to do what you told God you would do. And if not, 
tell him again in December t uh, uh, 31st and get out in 2016 and get the job done. You can do it. Once you promised it, you can do it. Amen. Right. So I just want you to, 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 to understand as the year is coming to an end uh, that God, God is going to take care of your situations, but he's going to give you counsel on how to do it. Obey his instructions, and I'm telling you, you will go through December, because for some people, December coming is always a time of pain and depression. You lost mommy around Christmas time. You lost your daddy just after Christmas, uh, uh, around New Year's. Uh, your, your marriage got broken up, and you really dread uh, December. But let me tell you, it's as good as any other month, because the God that we serve, he's well able to take care of you. Amen? Good. The book of the month, we are finishing off this month, and it has been I Am Woman by Apostle Gemma. We declare that this book is going to touch your life. Why not get our books? We have host of books. Oh, my word. Between uh, Apostle Gemma, uh, our big son Donnell, our second son Dion, and myself, we have over 40 titles. You can come down to Divine Destiny Worship Center into Exhaustive Book and Gift Center and just buy a copy of each book. You'll have about 40 books. Yeah, about 40 books to give us presents. Do you know a book is a more lasting present for your son, for your daughter, for your husband, for your wife than a box of chocolates? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because it's not just that the book will last, it's what goes into the person from reading the book. That is what's going to last, the transformation process. Amen? So come get our books for the Christmas. Amen. And uh, this is weekend. We love weekends at Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, because that's when we come into the presence of God together. We say we come into the embassy. Oh, yes, because we believe that we have moved from religion and we are going through the church into the kingdom. Oh, yes, Jesus was big on kingdom. Amen. In fact, for all of next month, December into January, we're going to talk about the transition, the new thing that God is doing, moving from religion into the church, then through the church into the kingdom to do what God has told us to do. Amen. So we're looking forward for you to be with us at the embassy this Sunday, this Sunday, hallelujah, and all our branches, both here in Trinidad and out in Antigua. We are here in Trinidad in Diego Martin, the headquarters in Sangri Grande in the far east, uh, Shaguanas in the central, and Faisabad in the far south. You need to be in the presence of God in the embassy. Amen. Good. And we also want to know we have three radio programs every week. Three radio programs every week. Monday, 9 p.m., 98.1. It's your date with destiny. Tuesday, 9.30 p.m., 107.1 living the more abundant life friday 3 p.m 98.1 we have ask pastor Gemma. powerful powerful program answering questions that others are afraid to ask many are afraid to ask and others are afraid to answer amen so until we meet again i'm apostle vivian duncan and we have my wife apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters at divine destiny worship center the house of champions I decree to you. You began life as a winner. Don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You are a God idea. Because when God made you, he had a destiny on his mind. God bless you until we meet again. As you continue to reach your goals through Jesus Christ, this has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.